person says, okay, this one I actually like a lot. Okay. I like it so much, I loved it. The comment, obviously, right? That's how you know, okay? This person says, what if Gohan in Beast... Now, remember, the context here, guys, is that last week we talked about Beast Gohan, or just Gohan and Broly versus Goku and Vegeta, okay? So there's the context, right? So back to the question. They say, what if Gohan and Beast can communicate with an out-of-control Broly tapping into the ape form? So he's referring to Broly's, like, Ozaru state that he taps into, right? right? Okay. And then he goes, on a primal level, you know? Because I can see them redoing the same scene with Cell Max where Gohan stops the punch after transforming. But instead, this time, uh, it's Broly's punch. He stops but doesn't hit him. He says he looks at Broly with the red eyes, lets out a growl, and then points to Goku and Vegeta. Uh. <laughs> and then two beasts versus two masters. Primal rage and technique. I don't know. I feel like... There can be, uh, that can be expanded upon. But if Gohan's beast means anything, I feel on a primal level, he'd be able to vibe with Broly. Now that is but fucking interesting. You know what's, like, that's cool. But <laughs> if we're talking about Ozaru states, couldn't we technically argue that, like, the ultra instinct forms and shit like that are kind of Ozaru based because of what we saw in the Tournament of Power with Goku's ground? No, because... See, with that, and this usually ends up happening when Goku hits a new transformation. I, if you, if you, actually, it's not even just him, but like when you look at the Saiyans, most of this, most of the time, whenever they get something new and they, they're, they're deep, they're trying to dig deep, yeah, yeah. you know, to like access whatever this new power is. So when that happens, it is almost like they are trying to knock on that door. And that's when this roar always comes out. It happened in Super Saiyan 3. It obviously happened in 4. I mean, he had to obviously go away for that that's shit. That's like some Naruto shit when he's talking to fucking Karama. Yo, but see, they have... <laughs> that's exactly what I was saying. I was like, that's, that's exactly like I feel like, like I've that. mentioned some shit like that you before. You have. No, you definitely it, have. The, the only... Like, that's a really cool concept. And it'd be, it'd be great if they did, you know, delve into that. But... My only issue with it is if they were going to do that and then it'd be, you know, like the beasts versus the masters, all the Saiyans still have that beast within them. It doesn't, eventually all of them can talk to their own Ozaru. So it's not special anymore. So that's, that would be a wrap. Yeah. And that's, mm. and that's another thing, right? Because like the way, the way the context of this sounds right now is just like, we're treating the Ozarus within them like a Jinchuriki, yeah, right. like a Biju. Literally. You know what I'm saying? And that's not what it is. That's not what it is. Because from what we've seen, at least in Dragon Ball, we have seen that they are Saiyans that can turn into their great apes and they're still conscious of what they're doing. Right. Right? Some of them. So, right. Some of them. And then even going all the way to GT, when we see it happen with Goku, like turning into an ape and then regaining that conscience was the whole key to just uh, going Super Saiyan 4. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the reason why Vegeta had freaking the oh, cheats, the right? Blood the fucking Bloodsways machine. Shout out to Bulma. So that way he can go Super Saiyan 4. That was the whole hack. It was like, oh, I just got to turn to a great ape and then just control myself. Okay. Even though, obviously, that that in itself was a little retconned if you think about it, because wasn't it in the last arc where they're show, showing all those back those uh, backstory parts, where it was like Bardock and like the whole gang of the Saiyans that was over there, they were like they knew what they was doing when they were in there. So did Vegeta when he first landed on Earth. That's right. That's right. He was. Yeah, yeah I remember that shit. The argument there was that, oh, he wasn't strong enough to handle Super Saiyan 4. I was like, get the fuck out nah, of here. Nah, and that's, 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 that in itself is you what you could consider a small plot hole. I, I'll, 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 I'll consider it that. I'll call it spade yeah. a spade. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, Dragon Ball's full of them. So, what's another one? Yeah, I mean, but, but, yeah, but saying, and then watch. I'm sure some of the people are going to be like, oh, well, GT, of course, not canon. Not canon. Right? GT, not even written by Toriyama. It's a Toei. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Like, but we no, was all honestly, fucking watching right it. Now, I'm I'm here for GT more than I am about what I've been seeing in the last few chapters, with the exception of Black Freeze's chapter. Absolutely. Oh, that's that good shit. <laughs>